Every day in the UK, over 3 billion litres of perfectly clean drinking water is being wasted due to leakages within the ageing pipe networks running beneath our roads and houses. Historically, what's the problem with our pipes? In the UK, you're looking at a million kilometres of buried pipes, uh, and generally they just run in a totally uncontrolled way. So it's quite easy to see a great big burst, but much more frequent are the very smaller background leaks, and they are the ones that, as a water company, you would really want to be able to repair. So I understand that this is a huge problem. What's the solution? So in order to understand where the power damage or failure begins to develop, you need to have a lot of sensors. And we don't have it at present. So we need to send sensors down the pipe to listen what's going on and to see what's going on. As this sensor technology for future infrastructure is being developed, the current challenge remains. How do we get it into the million kilometers of existing pipes? What work are you doing here? So I was using this robot which contains the acoustic sensing system. Yeah, it's making the sound, the chirp signal. And when it hits the like blockage or lateral connection, then it will reflect back and received by the microphone. These underground networks can date back over a hundred years to Victorian times, meaning they're largely unmapped and difficult to locate, with many digs resulting in what's known as a dry hole. This technology will help towards the first task of working out where the pipes actually are. From this, an initiative known as PipeBots was born to design and build miniature autonomous robots that can travel the underground pipe network and check for leaks and damage. This is one of multiple robotics labs that we've got in this building. Uh, this particular one is uh, focused on artificial intelligence, decision making, navigation, collaboration between robots, swarm intelligence. One of the first big challenges for this project is miniaturization, as some small sewer and drainage pipes can be as small as 100 millimeters. How do you get everything into such a small space weighing very little? But if it weighs too little, it's going to flip over. If it's too heavy, it's going to take too much power. If it's too light, it's going to be unstable. The plan would be for these small robots to travel the network at night when there would be less waste in water flowing down the sewage systems. This is where I live. Okay, Oh, you live in a wormery. I live in a wormery because I love worms. What exactly has this got to do with building and designing robots? These worms are just magical. They do everything they need to survive, and they do it with less than a thousand cells, which include exactly 302 brain cells. We can study how they move, and we can take the principles, and we can try and put them into robots. So what we're learning from these shots is how these animals are trading off their forward speed, with their need to sample their environment. And that's exactly what we need robots to do. Putting robots in inhospitable environments where humans can't reach is a good first step to try and build that infrastructure and build that trust and learning how do we do things safely. And then one day, hopefully, we can have these robots overground, finding solutions, helping us be more sustainable.